Okay, this is part two of things I don't like about brown culture. When elders are like blood is thicker than water, but like all the uncles and aunties are having property wars with their siblings. This one is a hot take. Being a pick me is rewarded in brown culture. We're just born into a patriarchal culture where most women's worth are associated with who they marry if they get married. So what does being a girl's girl really get you in brown culture? When aunties and uncle give you unsolicited advice disguised as concern. I have my parents for that. Like you don't need to be concerned for me. Men are not expected to learn any life skills skills until they get married. But meanwhile, girls are helping around the house starting puberty. And it's the moms who indulge this. Like, why are you doing your 25-year-old son's laundry? Okay, I want your guys' opinions on this one. Ideal scenario for some of these aunties is that their entire household is the whole puzzle and the bahu's just one puzzle piece. Or that a girl can adjust within a family without disrupting anything, the more desirable she is as a daughter-in-law. What has to do with actual wedding events? The way that the girl side of the family is expected to cater to everything the guy side of the family wants when they're the ones fronting the bill. Going off of that, the way that wedding events have become a money-making situation for the guy side of the family, when Islamically, look it up, the guy is supposed to pay for the entire wedding. So the way privacy is simply not a thing, brown people will literally ask you the most invasive shit. Not just the adults, like even the kids. Someone commented on my video the other day, are you pregnant? Just wondering. Stop wondering. I don't know if you guys agree or not, I think I went a little hard, but it came from the heart. And maybe I'll do things that I love about brown culture next because there are many. After popular demand, this is part three of things I don't like about brown culture. The idea that having a kid can save or even kickstart your marriage. That is so selfish. You need something to quote unquote save your marriage. Go to couples therapy. Speaking of therapy, <laughs> I do think it's gotten a lot better. Like my parents personally are very receptive to therapy, which is fantastic. But you definitely have to do some work to bypass the whole just pray and you'll feel better approach to mental health. And aunties are like, beta kamzor ho gayo, ya beta healthy ho gayo. Which is it? Why is cooking considered a feminine task? It is a life skill. I'm sorry, but if you're like 25 and you can't cook for yourself, whether you're a girl or a guy, that's embarrassing. This one's from the comment section on part two. The trend of beautiful, successful women marrying really unimpressive men just because they're getting pressured to be married. A moment of silence for my fallen sisters, please. Society rather see women miserable in marriages than be unmarried or single. I think a lot of brown adults use the word compromise as an umbrella term to coerce women and men into agreeing to things that intuitively they know aren't right for them. Next one's also from the comments. Why is talking about periods so taboo? Why are the girlies out here disguising their pads in the trash? For a society that is so hyper-focused on the femininity of women and their role as like child bearers, all know we need to be like menstruating to do that, right? I don't know if y'all heard, but a few days ago, a couple of Malvis in Pakistan said that if an actor and actress get married on screen, they're actually married. No matter how much fucking therapy I've been in trying to break the cycle, like my mom, She's trapped in a cycle and she always sucks me into it. I don't know if this is specific to my Korean mom or if it's like an immigrant parent thing. But every single time, like clockwork, every time I go on a big trip, my mom has to instigate a fight with me. It's happened so many times that I've had to create theories as to why it happens. I think she finds so much more comfort in the familiarity of fighting with me than being able to say, hey, I'm going to miss you when you're gone. I wish you were taking me. Like her saying that is so, so uncomfortable for her that she has to throw petty comments at me to make me feel guilty for going on a trip and we fight like it happens every single time last night like i was just sitting on the couch watching tv like we were having a good time out of the blue she throws the korean speakers will understand like that is not a question it's not really a command either there are a lot of layers under that one sentence she's implying that i don't live my life with intention or thoughtfully she thinks i'm living very mindlessly and her reminder is very passive aggressive and low-key very demeaning so tomorrow when she she drives me to the airport we're gonna have to do the same shit that we always do we're gonna have to sit in silence in the car side by side as she's driving me to the airport she'll probably slip me a note in my luggage saying like i'm sorry like have a good time i love you that's what i meant to say but i don't know why we fought it sucks like people talk about pretty privilege but i think the biggest privilege of them all is family privilege and there was actually a video that someone made recently about it and in the comments a lot of people asked what it was like no family's perfect, but mine's pretty damn close. It's always having someone to call since I could remember. It's healthy attention. It's that wholesome attention that I don't think people talk enough about, right? Male, female validation doesn't matter as much when you know that you can call your dad, when you know that you could call your mom. I'm straight, so I date men, but if I have a breakup, I could call my dad, no problem. I don't feel like there's something missing. Here's another boy that loves me, <laughs> you know what I mean? That like, I don't feel so rushed.
to do anything, which is bad, which is bad. I don't feel pressure. You could feel love in the air when you walk into our house. Both my parents are psychiatrists. It's a very emotionally safe place to be. You know, I've got a mom that loves me, a dad that loves me, two sisters that love me, a brother that loves me, cousins that love me. It's fights because it's a big family, but it's sitting there till you make up. When times are hard, you live for them. You live to make them proud. Um, you know that they wouldn't want to live in a world without you and vice versa. You know that there's not a world where they would let you sleep out in the cold. It's knowing that right or wrong, it's you and five people against the world. My confidence is really high because they made it so. They're very unique. So they told us that it was fine for us to be like who we were and we believed it. It's knowing that all you need is family and everybody else is extra. So if you get bullied, some loser doesn't like you, who cares, come home. It's really painful when they're in pain. Really painful because it's your pain too. It's being one of the luckiest people on the planet and going home. Here's another boy that loves me. <laughs> Have you guys seen the TikTok of the girl who's super sad because she has a huge Filipino family, but they're super toxic? That video hit really close to home for me. Came from a pretty big Filipino family too, got together every single weekend. Family was first, but man, my family was super toxic. They would talk crap about each other, compete with each other. They would fight. Anyway, so I was the first of my cousins to stop going to family parties. And I remember my aunties and my uncles would talk so much crap about me. My grandma would talk crap about me. And then I was the first of the cousins to move away. I decided to move out of state because I just wanted to get away from my family. Especially when I became a mom, I did not want my kid to follow that behavior. I wanted to basically end that cycle of toxicity. I didn't want him to feel the way that I felt, judged by my own family. But it was really sad because I grew up in this really big family and I remember just having so much fun with my cousins and just great memories. And you know, my kid basically did not grow up with any, any family. Anyway, to that girl who posted that video, I just want to tell you, you're making the right decision. My kid did not grow up with family, but he's not toxic. They would all I said was some people aren't players, they're predators. And that post brought out all the narcissists. I tried my best to use words like people and y'all and the men still got on there. And what they were saying didn't even make sense. They were deflecting and not having any accountability. And they were putting the shoe on, but trying to say it didn't fit. Like what? Then you have some of them that were trying to correlate a woman enhancing her beauty with makeup or extensions or like nails or something like that with somebody wearing a figurative mask. Like, how was that one the same? Like, by like the third date, you can tell the woman, hey, I would love to see you in your natural state. I want to see your natural beauty, blah, blah, blah. That's understandable. It's either she could take it off or she won't. But at the end of the day, you know she's wearing makeup to enhance her beauty. That's not something that she can lie to you about. Now, a man wearing a figurative mask can lie about not having kids, can lie about um not being married, can lie about his intentions to date you and why he wants to do it can lie about his finances it's not the same you have some people that were commenting outrageous things trying to deflect from the initial topic like oh well that's her fault that she got lied to abuse manipulated ha 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 you gotta know the game and stuff like that the thing about it is whomever got played or lied to abused um or predatorized was the victim some people are gullible some people are um inexperienced and stuff like that but that even pushes what i was trying to say even more because predators prey on the weak some people are dating people way younger than them because they know they're naive they know they're gullible some people are inexperienced and there are men and women that are master manipulators everybody want to go around here and say oh you got got everybody has gotten played before stop trying to act like y'all ain't never got played or lied to before that's why some people be around here hurting people because hurt people hurt people and that just really sounds weird to me anyway like that's what i mean by seek help because saying stuff like that is the equivalent to saying if y'all women weren't wearing them skirts or if y'all weren't dressing provocative y'all wouldn't have gotten great it's y'all fault because of the way y'all were dressing like uh what that's what I'm trying to say. Some people are predators. They're narcissistic. They like to deflect and they don't want to have any accountability at all. And they, it's everything that they do is always somebody else's fault. Like, for instance, I even had a couple of people saying, oh, y'all some single mothers. 
Like you're you're further pushing the agenda yourself that men are not ish. Because oh, y'all should have picked better men, or you if you wouldn't have done this, you wouldn't be a single mother. At the end of the day, a child is both parents' responsibility, and regardless of whatever the relationship was, the dynamic was between those two parties, they are supposed to take care of that child. Even if he don't give a damn about the mother, how can you not care for and provide for what came from you? Stop trying to blame women for everything. That's what I'm talking about. You know, just straight narcissism when you deflect and don't have any accountability. It's immaturity and all. And then you got a bunch of them like, yeah, but it wasn't the same feeling when your daddy left to the corner store and to get some cigarettes and never came back. Like, are you mad at us women or are y'all mad at y'all moms and trying to take it out on us? I don't know. But that shit was weird. Like, that is real creepy, y'all. That's what I mean by predators. Then here's the icing on the cake. The vast majority of men, anything that they do wrong, they always try to compare it to a woman asking for some money. Like, let me tell you something. A woman coming straight to you the first date, the first link up, the first conversation and straight up telling you what her requirements are and letting you know what her intentions are and what she wants is not her being a predator. You cannot compare a woman straight up asking you and telling you what she wants to a man sitting and lying to your face, to a man manipulating you and trying to act like he don't want no just sex from you. Uh, if a woman's sitting up there and telling you exactly what she wants the first time you talk to her, that's a real ass bitch. You may not like it, but that's fine. You got the opportunity to say yes or no based off of her real pure intention of fucking with you. A man lying, manipulating and all of that stuff and trying to act like he don't want just sex from you is predatory as fuck. It's not one and the same. Stop trying to compare the two. Just have some accountability. If you do that stuff, just change. Ain't nobody trying to bash y'all. This is what we really out here dealing with, with men and women. I'm not trying to say it's just, a, it's not a fucking gender war. So I need to talk to y'all about something. I recently went to an event and there were about a thousand people there. And of the couples that were there, about 95% of them were black men with non-black women. The person leading the event was a black man that was married to a white woman. I'd be lying if I said that seeing all of this at the same time was not triggering. This is pretty much what the dating scene looks like overall in LA. Here are four other observations that I picked up on since moving to LA. One, it's not equal. It's not like I'm seeing a bunch of black women dating outside their race. In fact, I'm barely seeing black women dating at all. Two, it's gotten so bad that at this point, whenever I do see a black man that's single, the first thing that I'm asking myself is, I wonder if he dates black women. Three, within the past couple months, I've had conversations with multiple black women that actually want to leave LA. Not because of the economy, not because they aren't flourishing in their careers, but simply because they feel like there's no love for them in LA. The fact that I know so many beautiful, talented, compassionate, evolved black women that are all feeling the same way makes no sense to me. And lastly, when you don't see yourself reflected in a space, you feel like you don't exist. As a black woman myself, I can tell you honestly, when it comes to the romantic space, I have never felt more invisible than I do living in LA. Said that his mom worked two jobs, took care of him and his siblings, and she ain't complained once. He more attracted to strong women, not these soft girls. And even though his, me and his mama might have a few things in common, I could tell that I'm not his type. But I wonder if she even knows that he speaks like this. Because I'm sure a thousand tissues wouldn't be sufficient for the times that his mama wanted to cry, but she couldn't in front of her kids. Looking for a woman as strong as your mama, but not hoping to never be as weak as your daddy who gave your mother no other choice. She was forced to be strong, but she was still just one person. And I'm sure a thousand tissues wouldn't be as sufficient for the times that your mama wanted to cry because work had to come before practice and recitals. Because bills had to be paid and kids have to be fed. But oh, what well, she could have been if she was able to live a softer life. To be accompanied by a man who is proud of having responsibilities, he doesn't run from them. And just because she carried it well, it does not mean that it wasn't heavy. It does not mean that she didn't want to complain or scream. So ask yourself, do you want a woman to be strong or do you want her exhausted? You like them weary? You want her to be spread thin? Sitting across from women asking them what do they bring to the table? You're not looking for no soulmate. You're looking for somebody strong, remember? Strong enough to carry the load of what you don't want to do and never complain even when it's justified just like your daddy. 
And unfortunately, it ain't no badge of honor or no awards for waking up every day and doing what you're supposed to do, doing what you got to do. Just more women that are hyper independent because they learned a long time ago not to wait around from nobody because half of the time ain't nobody going to show up. But me, if you care. My mother told me to fix a plate for, for my father. Mm -hmm. And I did, but I put it in the oven. Well, when he came in, he didn't see it. So he didn't think there was anything to eat. So when he started raising pain about not having uh, any food in the house, as if he provided, mm -hmm. um, I went in the oven, I pulled it out, and I said, no, Dad, here's some food here. And he took the plate and slapped it out of my hand. You know, and I just looked at the plate, it crashed on the floor. And I looked up at him, and he said, yeah, he said, what you giving me this look like? You can fight me or something? You want to fight me? And he pulled out a knife and he put it to my throat and he told me that if I moved, he would kill me. I saw a flashlight coming up the stairs where somebody had called the police and um, it was the police coming through the back door. And then my father threw the knife down and uh, the, the, the police took him out of the house. It was snowing outside mm. and um, the police officer told me to ask me if I would go and get him a jacket or a coat. And knowing what he had just done to me. Did your father a jacket? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, uh, as far as I'm concerned, he has his coat on. Mm. That was pretty much the, I want to say the straw that broke the camel's back with him. I'm over men getting away with being misogynistic by just saying white women. You can talk shit about white women. We're bad. Oakley sunglasses, Emmett Till. We know what we did. Feet Married on the to airplane. A cop, little dog. Being offended on our behalf. Yeah. But, but when oh. white men go, the problem with white yeah. women, blah, blah, blah. Here's my little thing about that. Every woman in that man's life is white. Your mother's white. Your girlfriend's white. Your friends are white. So you are talking about women. Yeah. And you just want to call them annoying. And if you weren't so much of a coward, you would just say women are annoying. But you say white women, so nobody's allowed to say that you're being an asshole. Just Lizzie went on stage, which was years ago, and yeah. you were doing a drunk about your own experience. A comic went on after you and was like, why are you talking about getting I'd fuck you. And it was right. so heinous. And I was going next. I remember being like, I have to go up now and yell at this guy and be the white woman bummer. And it sucks when you have to be the white woman bummer because we're famous for not letting anybody have any fun. But you painted me in a corner by fucking yelling at my friend about how it's like kind of her fault that she got. I don't want to be the nye, nye, nye. but you're being a misogynistic pig and getting yeah. away with it with your little racism misdirect. I yeah. love a racism misdirect. I mean, that's your whole act, but <laughs> but I'm Pretty saying, much, yes. but you're like smart and you can talk about that experience. He's just a white guy who hates women. 